Hey guys, Takai Rikushi here again with another quick guitar lesson. And today's topic is how to play faster. And when I say playing fast, I just mean playing faster than what you're currently able to. So it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you want to play like Steve Vai, but if you're still having problems uh, being able to play a tune that's a little bit out of your reach, then hopefully these tips are going to help you out. So when I talk to students about playing faster, there's three main uh, points that I like to emphasize. And those three main points are accuracy, efficiency of movement, and relaxation. So the first one, accuracy, is about being able to play the notes correctly and well at a slower speed before you attempt to play them at faster speeds and that you don't practice it in a way that's fast but sloppy. A fast phrase that's played accurate is going to sound great, obviously, but a fast phrase that's played inaccurately is not going to sound good. As a matter of fact, it's better to play whatever piece it is at a slower tempo that you can handle and that you can play well and the end result is going to sound much better than playing at a tempo that's out of your reach. The second point is efficiency of movement and this is about removing any sort of excess movement in the hand that doesn't contribute to the execution of the music. So when it comes to the left hand, a lot of guitar players will have play in a way where their fingers are flying about like this. Lots of big movements. So you want to minimize that. So for example, I will play a A minor pentatonic scale like this. <laughs> Right there, I was very careful about the efficiency. I didn't make any big movements in the fingers. However, some people might play it like this. So notice how my hand was making big movements, but there wasn't any sort of discernible difference in how it sounded. Only thing that would happen is that it would slow you down. So you want to minimize those kind of movements in the left hand. So when it comes to the picking hand, what I see frequently is, for example, when you pick a note, a student might do something like that. And the pick, after picking the note, will end up out here, far away from the guitar. Again, this doesn't really benefit you in any sort of way. And it's usually just a habit that kind of develops. Essentially, you want to just keep your pick close to the strings. Then finally, relaxation means to avoid any sort of tension in your muscles. And this doesn't just have to do with the hands. It actually has to do with the entire body. Um, oftentimes, when, I, when there's tension in the hand, the notes will be picked very loud. And then also in the left hand, there's too much tension. You might press down too hard on the string and make it go out of tune. Another thing is when muscles are tense, they take a little bit longer to relax, which is what needs to happen for you to let go of the note and to move on to the next note. So it'll slow down that process in your muscles as well. Now, tension that creeps into the rest of your body, not just your hands, can be a little bit harder to notice. One thing I like to recommend is practicing in front of a mirror, because a lot of times it has to do with posture. If you don't have good posture, then you're going to be tensing up in certain areas. So sometimes I see guitar players kind of go like this. They're very much focused on the notes that they're playing, and they'll get hunched over. And then the tension will creep into their shoulders and neck. Other times, people's bodies kind of just end up in weird positions like this or this. And the shoulder, one shoulder might be raised. Um, an elbow might go out. So these are the kind of things that are a little bit harder to notice because so much of our energy is focused on our hands and fingers. 
So what I want you to do is see if you can pick up on these concepts in your own practicing as you're challenging yourself with faster and faster musical passages and try and correct them. You'll have to do it very slowly at first. So you want to build those habits at a slower tempo and then gradually increase the tempo. It's a good idea to work with a metronome in order to do this. So accuracy, efficiency, and relaxation. I hope these points were helpful for you and please like, subscribe, hit the bell notification button and leave a comment if you liked this lesson. And until next time, please take care. Bye-bye.